this is Canyon's brand new Spectral On. Everything about it is completely new. Brand new frame, a front triangle, rear triangle, and for the first time on a Spectral, it's completely carbon fiber. This has got up to a massive 900 watt hour internal and removable battery. So this bike here has got loads of tech on it, like probably the most tech filled electric mountain bike that I've seen so far. There's a few models in the range. This is their premium top model and it's priced accordingly. It's probably the first Canyon that I've seen over 10,000 pounds. This is 10,499 pounds. Yeah, it's gotta be the most expensive Canyon e-bike ever maybe the most expensive Canyon ever, but there's a few models in the range. And this one here is the most tech filled e-bike I've ever seen. So 900 watt battery, uh, full carbon fiber. It's light, really light. And we'll come onto that in a moment, but it's got SRAM's flight attendant, which I've never seen on an e-bike. So SRAM's flight attendant on the fork and the shock. It's got little sensors in the crank as well. Let's go through the headlines because to me, there's a couple of things that make this bike really stand out. First is the fact that it's got a 900 watt hour battery. You can get a version with a 720 watt hour battery as well, which is a little bit lighter, but this one is the 900 watt hour version. And the weight, the weight for this with a massive battery is 22 point eight kilos which is it's that's pretty staggering really for a for a full power full fat electric mountain bike with a 900 watt hour battery to come in at 22.8 kilos now most e-bikes at the moment are coming out around the 24 to 25 kilo they don't have anywhere near a battery of this size and the battery the batteries are the things that add, add the weight now i can see a few areas that they've saved some weight the fork is a lyric it's a little bit lighter than one of the uh, zebs or the fox 38 so they've saved a little bit of weight there the tires are lighter tires but they're firmly positioning this as a trail machine. It's not like a, an enduro e-bike. Maybe we'll see one of those in the future, but this is firmly positioned as a trail electric mountain bike. A do it all kind of e-bike. They're not saying it's a massive hard hitting enduro e-bike, but a trail weapon. So some of the headlines, lighter, stiffer, stronger. So lighter, yeah, it's lighter than the previous frame. They've shaved loads of weight off of it. And get this, this bike with a 720 watt hour battery is 21 point nine kilos, 21.9 kilos if you go for the 720 watt battery, which is still a big battery. So you get a sub 22 kilo e-bike if you go for the smaller battery or with this battery here, still pretty reasonable, 22.8 kilos, it's, pr it's pretty cool. And Canyon are claiming it's stiffer and stronger than before. Now, I don't know if you ever looked at the classification ratings for bikes. They're put in particular categories and that kind of defines how burly they are and how the company rate them to be used on the trails. So for example, a category one might be a kid's bike for riding on pavements. A category two might be more of a gravel machine. Category three might be a trail bike and they'll say that it's capable of 30 centimeter drops. Category four, a little bit more. They've actually come up with a new category for this one and they're saying it's category 4E. It's tested for higher strength and impact resistance against a category 4 bike. So the build, allegedly, according to Canyon, is a little bit burlier. Um, they're calling it a bomb-proof beast. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe, but we'll see. They're saying it's got new rear end stiffness. They've bolstered that. It's got a new seat stay bridge, a burly ball bearings, in the massive 15 mil through axles at the main and seat stay pivots. So hopefully those big bearings should mean that the suspension stays as smooth as possible, even in really crappy conditions. So that's cool, lighter, stiffer, stronger. We all want that, that sounds really cool. The geometry's changed. It's not radical, the geometry, but it has changed. It's longer than the previous generation, 25 mil per frame size. So large is 485 millimeters in reach. Seat tube's a little bit shorter by 20 mil. So you've got better standover height, fit longer dropper posts on there as well. Easier to move around on descent. So you can get that seat post nice and slammed. And Canyon say it's got the classic spectral ride quality still ingrained in this bike, but more capable than before. The head angle is 65.5 degrees. So it's not slack by any means. Um, it's running a mullet, so 29er at the front and 27.5 at the rear. 
And Travel, it's actually got 155 mil of rear wheel travel and uh, 150 mil out the front. So more rear wheel travel than at the front, which is more unusual. Some bikes do it, but normally you have more out the front. Actually, it got me thinking as soon as I saw that, that a 160 fork on here, it's crying out for, it's slacking it out a little bit and you get 10 mil more travel out the front. That'd be something I'd be curious to try. So what about these new batteries? Well, Canyon have had them custom made and they are removable. When you remove it, it's not the quickest battery to remove. You need to remove the bash plate. There's kind of a little pull strap on it. And then there's two screws that actually hold the battery into the frame. And then it slides out underneath the bike, like a few e-bikes out on the market. So you're gonna to need to have it in a stand like I've got here. Uh, or side of a trail, you might need to turn the bike upside down or lay it flat to remove it. Some people don't need to remove the batteries at all, but if you do need to remove it and charge it or travel with it, it is possible to remove. The battery reminds me of a big chocolate bar. It's really, really uh, thin. And actually that fits in with the profile of the bike. If you look at it side on, like dead on, it looks really thin and uh, narrow. But as you're kind of standing over the bike, you can see it's really wide. The frame so they've done a great job in making it look really svelte and really thin but actually that is kind of like an optical illusion because when you get close to the frame you can see how how wide it is to accommodate this massive 900 watt hour battery but actually the battery weight is not massive it's actually not that much heavier than like a bosch 750 watt hour battery it's only a couple of hundred grams heavier but you get a 900 watt hour so mega mega like massive range i'm sure you can ride more in boost or if you're riding in trail you can just probably get like some insanely long rides with a 900 canyon claim that you can almost get 100 kilometers they're saying you can get 97.2 kilometers such an arbitrary figure so um range tests are they're so dependent on so many factors, but yeah, um, if you do what Canyon did, they got 97.2 kilometers and 2,132 meters of elevation with the 900 watt battery. There you go. Now they actually say they've constructed the battery with the cells horizontally to keep the weight as low as possible. Kind of makes sense. The weight is, if the batteries are laid horizontally instead of vertically. Ultimately it has a lower center of gravity. Now the Shimano EP8 motors actually rotated upwards at a 30 degree angle so they can tuck the battery lower within the frame. So like a lot of e-bikes are coming out with bigger batteries, they are getting slung really, really low. I do think actually it does change the aesthetics a little bit. They start to look quite bulky and bulbous down at the bottom area now. It's happening with a lot of nearly all the e-bikes that are coming out with big batteries. They're getting this kind of big chunky <laughs> lower look to them. I guess it does keep the weight as low as possible, the center of gravity as low as possible. So yeah, I think uh, a lot of bikes are kind of following that trend. The frame construction actually looks really well done. I've taken a good look around the frame, the build quality, the fit and the finish look great. They've got a few bits of frame protection already applied, which is pretty cool. There's some chunky rubber chainstay protectors that should keep it nice and quiet. And the cockpit actually looks quite futuristic, really minimal, no clutter at all. It's got dual axis, so axis seat post, axis gears, and even the remote controller wire is internally rooted in the handlebar. So all this kind of seamless stem and the handlebar integration actually looks quite cool. The cables are neatly integrated into the headset. So really clean looking. You're a little bit limited if you want to change a stem because the stem and the handlebar are all one piece, but you could put a totally different handlebar and stem on if you wanted to. I think the stock one actually looks quite cool, so I'd probably try that out and hopefully that would work for me. So what about the rest of the spec? Well, carbon fiber wheels from DT Swiss, they're the new e-bike wheels, which have thicker spokes, um, bigger bearings. They're built for the abuse that e-bikes take, which is basically riding them way more and further on each ride. So HXC 1501 carbon wheels from DT Swiss, which are awesome. 
and RockShox flight attendant. Now what flight attendant is, is it's essentially a fully automated suspension system. It's got sensors built into the fork, the shock and the crank arms, which is like I say, a first on an e-bike. I've certainly never seen any e-bike with this system on. So yeah, this is a world's first. So it's listening to you as a rider and responding in real time. So it's got sensors on it to read rider and terrain inputs to anticipate the perfect suspension position. So it's got a control module on the fork, the rear shock and a pedal sensor, and it will work out the best of three positions to be in. So the standard position is open. That's like the traditional setting that you probably will have on your bike now. And then there's a pedal position. It knows exactly when to stiffen up just the right amount to maintain traction. And then there's a lockout position. So it'll know when to put it into the firmest position to maintain absolute traction and efficiency. Now I'm quite curious to find out how this will actually work on an e-bike because to me, it makes real sense on a traditional pedal powered bike, maintaining efficiency of the rider with a motor. Maybe it will make that 900 watt hour battery go even further, or maybe it might just be too much tech for an e-bike. Is it really necessary when you've got a motor? Maybe I'm wrong, I haven't tried it yet, so really looking forward to testing it out. And this particular bike is available to order now. This is the CFR. There is a lower spec version called the CF, and actually that's available to order a little bit later. That's in May, but this one's available now. So let me know what you think of this bike. Hopefully I'll be able to get a proper ride of it soon. Um, subscribe if you wanna see that, and I'll catch you all soon.